All right, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. Uh, Dave at YouTube sent in this question, and I completely feel his pain. He's interested in doing a filter, a top 10 filter, on two different columns, and you know this just doesn't work. If you would filter this down to say, hey, I want to see just the records for Tom, click OK, and then come over to the score and say, I want to see number filters, top 10, I want to see the bottom, that's the best, five items, click OK. They only give us three. That's because Tom's fourth and fifth best scores are not in the top five overall, or bottom five overall, so that is very frustrating. Let's turn off the filter. We're going to use an advanced filter to solve this, at least that's how I'm going to do it. We'll see what Mike has to do. I'm going to build a little helper cell over here. This helper cell is going to be an array formula that says we want to go through and find Tom's fifth best score. That way we, we know where we're going to go. So uh, let's take a look at this formula. I say we're going to look through B6 to B27, see if it's equal to our selection here, Tom. If it is, then I'm with the corresponding cell from C6 to C27. Otherwise, I want a really huge number, something that will make it out of the realm of being in the top five. So I chose 999. That's my interior piece of the formula. And then I use the small function. Small is like min. You know, min gives you the smallest value. But you can say I want the small of some range, comma 2, to get the second smallest, or comma 5 to get the fifth smallest. So Control Shift Enter that. And it tells us that we're looking for everything less than or equal to 27. Now, using advanced filter, generally we have to build a criteria range. The criteria range usually looks like something like this, a heading, and then the value that we're interested in. But there's another variant of the criteria formula where you leave the heading blank. And in that variant, the second cell has to contain a formula. The formula has to point to the very first row of data in your data set. And Excel will take that formula, copy it down, virtually for all of the things. So my formula here says, hey, we're going to look through C6, the very first score, and see if it's less than or equal to our helper cell over here. Now I had to put dollar signs in to make sure that we're always pointing at the same helper cell. All right, so finally, we're going to go into the advanced filter, filter the list in place. I do want to use a criteria range. My criteria range is E1 through F2. Click OK, and it filters the list down to just Tom. Now, Let's clear that filter and we'll try someone else. Let's uh, choose Fred. And again, we will do the advanced filter. Click OK. And we see all of Fred's scores. Now, Fred didn't have five scores. And you can see that's our helper cell over here shows up. But we still get to see all of Fred's scores, even though the 74 clearly is not in the top five overall. All right, so that's my method. When uh, Mike showed me this problem, I was like, oh, I want to use this cool formula version of the advanced filter. Let's throw it over to Mike and see what Mike has for us. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, that advanced filter was great. What I like about it is that it was self-contained. You run this, uh, change the name here, run the advanced filter, boom, it filters it right in, right in place. Now I'm going to use a formula here, and it's going to take up a little real estate. You can see here we have the same data set. Uh, set. I'm going to uh, do some formulas up here, but this this section here of the spreadsheet will be filled with formulas, so it will just automatically extract. The disadvantage, of course, is that you're using real estate, and if you have a large data set, you're going to have to have a lot of formulas here. The advantage is, though, you won't have to run the ad advanced filter each time. Now, I'm going to click in this cell here, and I'm actually going to add some data validation. Alt D L, Tab L, Tab, and I'm going to get my source right here. Click OK. So now I can select Tom. Now, I want to count Tom. I need to go through this list and count, because that will help us down here with our formula. I'm going to do a formula up here, equals count, and that's in double quotes with a space at the end, ampersand, and then I'm going to click on Tom. So we have our label that will also change. And now I need to count the occurrence of Tom, how many scores there are, equals count if. I'm going to click in this cell, control shift down arrow, F4 comma, left arrow, close parentheses. I didn't need to lock that, but it, it jumped the screen up, so that was convenient. Tab, and I want to get the bottom five. So I had to count Tom, because um, I need to, in this section here where I'm going to show the formula, I need to show just the top five. But for instance, Fred, 
Ooh, Fred has three. So I need to then only show three records. I'm going to do a label here, too, equals, in double quotes, bottom space, double quote, ampersand, down arrow. So that way I have a label there, too. If I change this to four, boom, it says that. If I change that there, uh, this one will update. Now our formula. We're going to have two formulas, one for extracting the name and one for extracting the five smallest. This one will be equals if. And we need to turn on and off this formula. So right now, Fred, we need to turn it on after we get to three. So we're going to use rows which will allow us to increment a number inside a formula. And I'm sitting in F6, so I'm going to do F dollar sign 6 colon F6. That way it'll count the rows, but as it goes down, it'll increment higher one row at a time. If that's less than or equal to, and what we need is the min of both of these. Because right now we need to turn it off when it gets past 3, but later, when it gets to Tom, we need it to be 5 instead of the larger 8. So I'm going to say the min of this. And I'm going to lock it with my F4 key going down. So if that's the case, that rows are less than or equal to the min, then what do I want? I want to run, uh, I want to get the name, F4 to lock it going down. Otherwise, I want blank, double quote, double quote, close parentheses, control enter. And I'm going to drag it down. So now we got Fred. If we change it to Tom, boom, we have Tom. Now our formula for extracting the small is going to um, the five smallest is going to we're going to use the small function. But we need a uh, we need to look at this column, get a criteria Tom, and then go over here and get his values, and from that get the five smallest equals if this cell right here equals blank. Then I want blank. Otherwise, and here's where we'll do our small. Small, and we're going to have to do an if, just like you saw in Mr. Excel's. I'm going to get this range, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4, F4. If that's equal to Tom, and lock that one going down to, then what do I want? I want to look at this range here, F4, F4. Right now, this, the first part of the if will give us a bunch of trues and falses. This then will, um, the trues and falses will only extract Tom scores. So then we close parentheses on our if. And notice we do not need the false, so I'm just going to close parentheses. The screen tit says, hey, give me the k. The k is the smallest. Well, we want 1, 2, 3, 4. And so we're going to use our rows again. That increments numbers. So as we go down, we get the first smallest, second smallest, third smallest. Now I'm sitting in G6, so I'm going to put G dollar sign 6 colon G6, close parentheses. Now the a small screen tip says, hey, close parentheses on that. The if says close parentheses on that. This is an array formula, so I hold Control and Shift and Enter. And then I double click and send it down. And just like that, I have uh, my little system. I change this to 5. It shows Tom's sorted in order 5 smallest. If I change it to Fred, it automatically only selects Fred's 3 smallest. All right, uh, there it is. We'll see you next trick.